Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Joshua chapter 9 verse 1 as well as 1 Kings chapter 4 verse 11. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for another day Lord God. Thank you for providing for us every day. Thank you for not forgetting any days. Lord we love you and we praise you. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Joshua chapter nine, verse one. As soon as all the kings who were beyond the Jordan in the hill country and in the lowlands, all along the coast of the great sea towards Lebanon, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites heard of this. Wow. So heard of this. What was it that they heard of? They heard of the defeat at AI and the battle at AI. And they also heard of the walls of Jericho just falling down and the people coming in and just ransacking the place. Right. So this is what all of these coastlands and the natives of these lands that were in the promised land at the time when God was bringing his children across, right? So these were the people who were occupying the land. And it says, as soon as all the kings who were beyond the Jordan in the hill country and in the lowlands, so both the high and the low, all of it that belonged to the children of Israel in the highland and in the lowland, all along the coast of the great sea towards the in the great sea being i think the mediterranean type area and coastlands towards lebanon the hittites the amorites like all of the ites right canaanites the parasites the hivites the jebusites heard of this what did they hear about you know it's one thing to hear about a battle that went on and kind of be scared that oh my goodness you're next but when the fear of God comes across you it's something totally different right some some people you know might want to fight back but the fear of the Lord is is something that is going to rock these people to their core because they know they are protected by God the God who created everything that's the claim that they have right the the um the hebrews they knew you know worshiped only one god right and he had drowned the pharaoh from egypt and they knew that that's something that they had heard right that's something that they knew about they knew that um that that the walls of jericho had came tumbling down and the children of israel hadn't put a, a ram hadn't rammed anything into it they knew about these things they heard about these things they were scared it says as soon as all the kings were who were beyond the jordan that means that all of them when they heard of these things they they wanted to unite right all of these that they're naming in the next verse they're saying they were uniting to try to fight against Israel because they knew that Israel was coming with their God, right? And so um, this was a very scary thing because when if God be for you, who can be against you, right? What, how, what army, what, what weapon can you hold up against God? You can hold nothing up. And we have that God, the God of the Hebrews, that God is our God. He's the God who's on our side. He's the God who makes them tremble in fear. He's the God who, who is going before us, fighting our battles for us. All these different people were trying to unite and none of them would be able to stand a chance if the children of Israel stayed with God. Amen. All right. And this is conflated today with first Kings chapter four, verse 11, Ben Amenadab in all the hills of Dor to path Solomon's daughter, his wife. All right. And so this may seem obscure, but if you read this in its context, this is speaking about, you know, one of the the sets or groups of people that fell under the um 
management of one of the 12 people who were assigned um, to the house of Solomon, right? Remember Solomon had so many wives, right? He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. So that's a lot. That's a lot of people and a lot of food and a lot of provisions that had to be made. So there were 12 officers that were in charge of these provisions to be provided to these families. And so each officer was assigned a month. And so one month, you know, January was for this person and February was for that officer. So um, one of the people that fell under this um this security, this provision was Ben Aminadab in the hills of Dor. The path, Solomon's daughter was his wife. That's why he was able to be provided for, right? He had provision from the king's table, right? Ben Aminadab, and he was married to Solomon's daughter. So his marriage to Solomon's daughter meant that he was royalty, right? He was connected right he they because of this marriage he was not just some rich man or or some you know man who had some sort of connection to somebody else or had done this in battle and, and won this accolade and therefore he was able to marry Solomon's daughter no Ben Amenadab was connected to the king's household therefore he was royalty Right. Therefore, he fell under the security of the king. Therefore, he fell under the provisions of the king. Right. If if someone came knocking on Ben Amenadab's door and tried to knock it in, right, they're going to have to answer to the king. Right. And that's why these are conflated, because this scripture is basically speaking about the fact that when God is for you, when the king is speaking for you, when the king is going before you, when the king is making your provisions for you, who can be against you if God be for you? right? Who can be against you? God is not just going to be for you in word. He's going to be for you in deed. He's going to make provisions for you. He's for your welfare. He's for taking care of you. Yes, the king had a lot of wives. He had a lot of children, but they were taken care of just like we are. We have been engrafted into this great body, this great kingdom, and we are taken care of. We're one of the children of the king. We are royalty. We are princes and princesses for the Lord. We sit in heavenly places, right? And we are rulers for him. We have so much power and so much authority and we need to use it. Why? Because if God be for us, who can be against us? right? If he, if he is walking before us and causing the people to tremble and causing these demons to tremble, causing these principalities and these powers to tremble, then, then what can stop us, right? We are powerful. We are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds because we have the power of Christ. We have his power in our hands. We have his mind, right? We have the mind of Christ. And, and therefore, we fall under the kingship, right? We fall under the security of the king and the kingdom. And we fall under the royalty of the king, right? We are connected through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Father God, that you fight our battles. You go before us and you cause our enemy to tremble when they hear that we're coming because we shine forth like you. We are unafraid because we have you going before us. We love you, Lord Jesus. Bless us. Help us to partake in the provisions of the kingdom. Help us to partake in the security of the kingdom and the welfare of the kingdom. You are telling us that we have it. Help us to grab hold of it and hold fast. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to show you the way he's going to help you walk into the ways of the Lord and stay there, right? Don't chase in the spirit, follow the spirit. All right, you guys go out, find a church home, um, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. Um, don't forsake the fellowship and shipping of yourselves one to another and go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus and, and make more disciples, make disciples of all men. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.